Pope Francis landing back in Rome after the longest trip of his papacy, the 87-year-old pontiff visiting four countries spanning two different continents. And our Inez de la Quatera is in Singapore on that history-making 12-day journey as the Pope shared his message of religious harmony. Pope Francis kicking off the most ambitious trip of his pontificate with Indonesia, the world's most populous Muslim-majority country, where his message centered on how different religions can coexist. The Pope stopping by the largest mosque in Southeast Asia, visiting the Tunnel of Friendship, linking it to a nearby cathedral, and sharing this sweet moment with the country's grand imam, the two leaders practicing what they preach as they called for greater interfaith dialogue. In various regions, we see the emergence of violent conflicts, he said, which are often the result of a lack of mutual respect. Then the Pope was off to Papua New Guinea, where he was greeted with an array of dazzling dances. Pope Francis here in Papua New Guinea receiving a very warm welcome. You can see all the singing and dancing, all of these people wearing their traditional clothing. In Port Moresby, one of the world's most dangerous cities and the furthest he'd ever been from Rome, Francis reaching out to what he likes to call the peripheries of the Catholic Church. The Pope even boarding an Australian Royal Air Force C-130 to visit the remote settlement of Vanimo, where some of those waiting for him had walked for days through jungles and over mountains. He was gifted a traditional feathered headdress while he brought with him nearly a ton of humanitarian aid and a message of peace. He made his third stop in Timor-Leste, Asia's new newest nation and the second most Catholic country in the world, just behind the Vatican, with over 97 percent of people identifying as Catholics. The Pope there greeted like a rock star, with roughly half of the country's entire population coming out for an open-air history-making mass. We want to peace for the world, especially for the poor. In Timor, the Pope facing pressure to address the clergy sex abuse scandal that has rocked the Catholic Church and calling on leaders to prevent every kind of child abuse, but stopping short of specifically referring to clergy abuse or issuing any apology. Last stop, Singapore, where Catholics are in the minority. The Pope circling back to that message of religious harmony, saying Singapore sets an example for the rest of the world. Everyone has the right to practice their religion. Everyone lives harmoniously here. A 12-day, four-country two-continent journey that came amid concerns for his health. As he usually does, the Pope used a cane and a wheelchair. I asked him at the start of the trip how he was feeling. He told me he was doing well. And for most of the voyage, despite the long hours, massive crowds, and sweltering heat, the Pope seemed to remain in good spirits. I pray for you. A noble death, you pray for me. Because this job is no easy. And the Pope heading back to Rome today, but he's not slowing down. He's got another much shorter trip to Belgium and Luxembourg later this month. And the Vatican telling me they are considering a trip to Turkey next year, though nothing has been confirmed yet. Rebecca and Gio? Lots of travels for the Pope. Our thanks to Inez for that.